We're just going to give folks a few moments to clear the waiting room. As a reminder, when you are entering from the waiting room, please do remain on mute unless or until you are appearing or testifying before the entertainment division. Give just another moment to make sure everyone has cleared the waiting room and has connected to audio. Good afternoon. This is an administrative hearing before the Mayor's Office of Consumer Affairs and Licensing. Today is Monday, March 6th, 2023. This hearing is being conducted pursuant to certain temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston's website. We are joined this afternoon by the Executive Director of the Mayor's Office of Consumer Affairs and Licensing, Kathleen Joyce, and Director of Operations, Rebecca Fu. I will read today's agenda item into the record. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the applicant. You will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the Entertainment Division and testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please do limit your testimony to two minutes and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. The application on this afternoon's agenda is 1885 Center Street, LLC, doing business as Boston Ale House, located at 1885 Center Street in West Roxbury. The application is to add the live entertainment categories consisting of disc jockey, dancing by patrons, karaoke, up to five instrumentalists, up to three vocalists, exhibition trade show, and floor show consisting of comedians until 1 a.m. seven days a week, added to the existing non-live entertainment license. In addition, the application is to operate two televisions on the outdoor patio. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good afternoon, Richard Joyce for, from Newman & Newman, 1 McKinley Square, Boston, Massachusetts. I am the attorney for the applicant. Uh, with me on the line is the owner, Edward Byrne, as well as the uh, licensed manager, Quentin Prell. Attorney uh, Joyce, can I just jump in for a second? Yes. So th this is, uh, I just want to make this clear because um, we've received a lot of communications in the last few days that to everyone who's um, here with us today, this is an entertainment hearing and I am chairing this as executive director of the entertainment division. There is no vote of the licensing board. This is gonna be a decision that I issue as director, executive director of the entertainment division. I have 30 days to issue my decision and I don't plan on issuing a decision today or tomorrow. I understand there's a community process that's still going on and I will be waiting until that community process is complete. So I hope that answers a lot of questions um, of people who have joined today, um, and there is no vote. But you may continue, Attorney Joyce. Thank you. Uh, the previous licensed operator of the premises applied for and was granted approval by the ZBA for live entertainment and was thereafter granted a license by this board to uh, operate live entertainment. Uh, prior to its opening, the Boston Nail House last summer, the applicant completely revamped the premises. Um, into a family and sports uh, restaurant. Uh, the applicant has applied for a live entertainment consistent with the previously licensed premises at 1 a.m. And present uh, is the current owner, Edward Byrne, as well as the uh, licensed uh, manager, Quentin Prout. Uh, both are available for any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Uh, is, is there anything further you would like to add before we move to questions, Attorney Joyce? Uh, no, not at this time. Uh, Executive Director Joyce, do you have any questions of the application? Yes. Could someone from um, the applicant um, describe exactly what kind of entertainment? I, I understand the categories you've described from a licensing perspective, but could you give me examples of what types of entertainment you plan on having at this location? Sure. Uh, Eddie, go ahead. Oh, come on. Sorry, Richard. Well, um, yeah, this is Edward Brown, the owner. Um, we basically were just requests from, from you know, current um, um, people at the restaurant was, you know, Sundays was 
you know, there was a ban there before the previous location. They asked us, could we do that? It was only a two-person ban on a Sunday. We wanted to hopefully do a, a bingo thing on a, on a Tuesday night. We currently do trivia on a Wednesday night and then possibly have live entertainment, you know, on Friday and Saturday nights. We did get input from the neighbours. Um, we had a meeting with them on Thursday regarding the um, the hours, and I told them that, you know, we really weren't looking for the reason we put we put the application in from the that the previous uh, location had. You know, the most we were really going to do during the week would be 11 p.m. You know, for trivia, the bingo thing, and then hopefully, you know, on a Friday and a Saturday night, we were hoping to maybe go to 12:30. And then on a Sunday, also 11 p.m. with the input from the neighbours. Um, but it wasn't a consistent, all the time, live bands or anything. You know, we don't, we're a, it's a more, it's, it's a family restaurant. You know, it's sports. A lot of people watch sports in there. So when there's sports on, we wouldn't have anything like that on. So it will be not a lot, maybe once a week. The trivia is once a week. And then we just had some requests to do a, a bingo on a, on, a, on, a, on a Tuesday night, which would be over at, you know, 10.30. That just gives us the flexibility to have it to 11 so they can they can wrap up and, and get out of there. But it wasn't a consistent, like, seven days a week or anything like that. It was, you know, more like flexibility so we don't have to complete, always apply for one-day licenses when we want to do something. You know, there was a couple of times we had, you know, we needed a magician there one time. We didn't, we weren't able to get the application in, things like that. We just would love the flexibility to be able to have these options. Okay, and I understand that the previous, um, previously licensed place had um, the same hours for entertainment, but can you tell me what you as operators did for community process? Just because a previous place had a certain license yeah. doesn't mean it's always um, carried no, over. No, we, we understand totally. We notified all the immediate um, neighbours by hand. We get um, a week prior, we sent out, you know, the notification of um, this hearing. Also, we had a, a Zoom meeting on Thursday night with the neighbours, um, with our liaison from... Um, from West Roxbury, and um, we that's the input that we got on tours tonight that I'm um, saying that you know we're willing to work with those hours um, going forward. Okay. Um, before we move on to um, public testimony, I want to ask Rebecca Fu, our um, licensing director, to um, ask questions I may have missed. Uh, yes. So um, I know you applied for dancing by patrons and a lot of live categories. Um, the plan is not to be a nightclub, correct? Oh yeah, absolutely. That was just more like ticking off the boxes. There wouldn't really be any dancing by patrons. We do have a small, you know, a small function room. I don't know if, you know, the, we, we, we just clicked, you know, the boxes on the application. It's not, it's not set up if, if you feel free to, look on our Instagram or anything that you can see photos of the restaurant. It's it's a family restaurant. There's no areas for dancing. There's no dance floor. There's none of that available. Um, so we didn't, we just kind of um, ticked that box while we were doing the application, but it's more smaller type, smaller type, one person, two person, live music. People give us names of people that were there before. And um, as far as karaoke and those things go, you know, it's that wasn't a consistent thing. It was just a, an option if we if we could do that. But there is no, there's no dance floor. There's no running. It's a family restaurant. We do have plenty of pictures online. You can you can you know see it, and it's all you know tables and boots. Okay. And that's how it's set up. And then you requested TVs on the patio. What are the hours of those TVs? And that would that would be just to. We would be shut off at the patio hours. Um, the patio was completely closed off from the street. It's actually a little bit below level, so you, you can't see the TVs in um, from the street. There was one neighbour that lives very high that mentioned that um, they could see in, but we would 
set those TVs on a timer with our IT department to make sure that they were shut off exactly when the patio closes. What, what are those hours? I don't have that right in front of me. I, I believe it was 10.30. Um, I just don't have that. Okay. Um, if you can verify with me after the hand yeah, absolutely. The hours. And then um, have you in installed any type of soundproofing for noise mitigation since you are requesting bike band and such? Yeah, when we built the restaurant, so we took the restaurant over um, nearly three years ago. We opened last summer. It was a multi-million dollar renovation. We put a serious amount of money into soundproofing. The entire ceilings were, were all put in with acoustical Acoustical material on all the ceilings, everything was soundproofed extensively. Um, we, we, I can even send you that, them, those architectural documents, but we, we did put in a lot of, a lot, of, a lot into that. Um, that would be very helpful if you could send that. Yeah, documents. absolutely. And should, if this were to get granted, and should there be any sound issues or any other issues, um, who would be the best contact? Uh, well, myself and Quinn, Quinn, Quinn Prattle is here with me. He's the general manager of the premises. He's he's sitting beside me right now. He's he's the, the manager on premises. With his uh, also his assistant manager is there. And um, so he, you know, anytime during hours, you know, there's a manager there full time all the time. Our, our office is available off hours or anytime to okay. to reach us. I will get you all that contact information. Yep, if you could send it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are you planning on, since you are having, you know, live music, are you planning on using promoters or charging a cover or is the entertainment just, you know, ancillary to like dining and the sports? It's known there'll be no cover charge, no promoters, none of that. The only thing which I also shared with the neighbors was if, if we were to do something, we would, we would also post it on our Facebook and Instagram if there was so they could see it, you know, you know, what we were doing. Nothing that would require a cover charge, anything like that. Okay. Um, I don't have any further questions. Executive Director Joyce, any further questions before we move to testimony? No, um, I may have some questions after the testimony. Thank you. We'll move to testimony in just a moment. I see there are a number of folks here um, who may want to speak. If you are planning on providing testimony, please use the raise hand function and I'll try to call on folks in the order that I see you sign up. Uh, before we get there, I will ask are there any uh, elected officials or their representatives who would like to provide testimony right now? How's it going, Dan? Um, Dan Hudson from the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services in the West Roxbury Liaison. I uh, just want to confirm that we did host an abutters meeting. Um, we did also have a separate meeting with a couple members of the Neighborhood Civic Association just to get the word out there ahead of time. Um, in the meeting, um, it was productive. The Ale House was able to communicate um, the schedule and, and the plan that they have um, detailed here today. Um, they were able to answer all the questions the neighbors had. Um, I will note that there were certain issues um, that the neighborhood had with parking, but obviously that does not apply um, to this, this hearing. Um, we're going to defer to the judgment uh, of the commissioner here on this one, but um, the butters meeting went well. Happy to report back and answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Dan. Are there any other elected officials or other representatives who would like to provide testimony before we move to general testimony? Great, thank you. We'll move to general testimony at this time. I do not see anybody who has used the raise hand function. Ah, oh, there we go. I see a hand raised uh, from Michael Tobin. Mr. Tobin, you may unmute yourself and uh, please read testimony. You have up to two minutes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, where is the raise your hand uh, icon? If you could tell us. Sure, if it's under reactions, you can click a button okay. that says raise hand. Right. Okay, thank you, sorry. No worries. Okay, uh, Michael Tobin, you were the first person signed up here. Mr. Tobin, are you with us? Okay, moving on. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to provide testimony? You would have two minutes to do so. I, uh, Mr. Hornstein. Hang on just a moment, you're on mute right now. Yeah, I'm Mark Hornstein. I'm uh, at 40 Hastings. It's kind of in the 300 yard circle, not quite, but um, I have two questions. Uh, if it's a family establishment, a family restaurant, why does the hour need to be 1 a.m.? That's number one. And number two, 
if it turns into a nightclub or disturbs the neighborhood, what's our recourse? Do we call the police? Do we call the owner? Uh, do we call our uh, council person? What do we do? And third of all, I know that um, Ann Hudson said, oh, this isn't about parking. But most of the residents here on the street say, yeah, it is about parking. Because even now when the restaurant is open on weekends during a sporting event or whatever, we have wall-to-wall -wall cars like all the time. And that's on top of the commuter rail parking. So I know that this body doesn't deal with parking, but I would ask that you use the issue of parking in informing your decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hornstein. Uh, Joel P, you are next. You may please. Uh... Yeah, this, is, this is Joel Peterson, I'm at number 31. I'm directly behind the restaurant. I'm the closest to Abutter. Um, I've already submitted a statement to the board, um, but uh, I was able to get back from my appointment in time to do this. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. Um, as I noted, um, the, the, the operators of the, of the restaurant really don't have any control over traffic and parking, but um, that, problem which exists already can only be exacerbated by um, entertainment at that late hour. So my, my suggestion is while I want the restaurant to be, to be successful, um, that those hours, especially given that this is a residential neighborhood um, with lots of families, um, children, pets, et cetera, that those, those hours be um, somewhat limited, um, at least initially, um, uh, so that we can see that the restaurant is in good faith, you know, really working with the, the neighborhood to, um, to manage what extras they can. Um, so my suggestion uh, in my letter was that uh, they'd be limited to a 10 o'clock entertainment closing time from Sunday to Thursday and at 11 o'clock on Friday and Saturday. As I understand it, I think um, these licenses are, are reissued every fall and that that would give us an opportunity to see um, how well this is working and um, to revisit this, this issue again. Um, so I, I appreciate uh, uh, having the opportunity to speak and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I'm sorry? No, I was just saying thank you, and I was asking if there are any other individuals who would like to provide testimony on this matter. Michael Tobin, let's try again. Last time we weren't able to hear you. Mr. Tobin, are you with us? I see your hand is raised, but we still cannot hear you. You can also provide written testimony to MoCal, M-O-C-A-L at boston.gov since we don't seem to be able to hear you this afternoon. Okay, and last call, are there any other individuals who would like to provide testimony on this matter? Yeah, Carolyn Breen. Ms. Breen, uh, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and you may have two minutes to provide testimony. Um, yes, I believe I am unmuted. So um, I did submit a letter and it was just to um, encourage that there be um, some more time before a decision is made so that the neighbors can agree to the specific, like more specifics that, um, that they're applying for. So whether it's the non-holiday weeknights or the timing, for instance, that um, for the outdoor patios so that there just be a little bit more time that they can have agreement with the owners who I think are, um, you know, hoping and, and sincere in their intent to be good neighbors, but there's always some um, room for negotiation there, I think, compared to the seven day a week until 1 a.m. versus what the neighbors are seeking. So I would support um, the neighbors in that pursuit of trying to get some middle ground. Thank you, Ms. Breen. You may have missed at the top of the hearing, um, the executive director, Kathleen Joyce, did state that uh, the division has 30 days to issue a written decision on this matter. So anything further, any agreement that the applicant might come to that should be brought to the division's attention should be sent to mocal at boston.gov. And again, the division has 30 days to issue a decision. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to provide testimony on this matter who have not yet done so? Okay, and once again, any written submissions can be sent to mocal at boston.gov. With that, the executive director will take this matter under advisement and will issue a written decision within the next 30 days. Thank you all. That will conclude today's hearing. Thank you. Thank you.